Yo, what is up? And today I want to talk about anime. Uh, now, I haven't actually been watching anime for that long, so I don't think my opinion is that robust and that, you know, experienced compared to people that have been watching for a long time. But in the short time, like two or three years that I've been watching anime seriously, I've racked up quite a few kills. I've, I've gone through, ran through at least 15 to 20 different series, which I think is a lot in a very short amount of time. It's like 10 series a year. Okay, maybe it's not a lot to some of you guys who watch anime all day, but it is for me. Anyways, so I wanted to rank all of the anime that I've seen. Most of it's been seen in sub, a couple of them have been seen dubbed, and so I'll point out the ones that I've that I've watched dubbed and I actually recommend that you watch dubbed. But you can use this video as, you know, a way of seeing how your tastes in anime match up to mine. If you've never tried anime or watched anime before, you can watch some of my S tier and A tier ranked anime and maybe see if you like it. And also you can give me your recommendations for what you think I should watch next and that might line up with my tastes because not everybody's going to have the same tastes to begin with. Um, but some people do end up liking things that I suggest and I like a lot of things that people suggest to me So I'm gonna show you that the guys list. I'm gonna show you guys the list right now uh, This is a all the way down to D tier and then everything else would be in that last tier of have not seen now, I didn't want to actually put anime in that list because you could put so many things in that list Fairy tale Neverland. There's there's tons of stuff that you could put there. I'm currently watching um, you know, My Hero Academia and Dr. Stone as they come out, and I'm also about seven or eight episodes into Black Clover, so I'm not gonna put that one on the list just yet, but that is something that I'm in the process of watching. Now, we're gonna start with the S tier stuff and work our way down to D tier, but my sort of checklist when I'm ranking these animes, uh, you know, I, I don't really do this step by step in my head, but they do come up as I watch the series and as I consider it more and talk to people who have watched it, but essentially I think there are five Five major points to each anime that sort of um, if they hit all those checklists and if they do all of those things really well then they're obviously you know a tier high a tier s tier and then the fewer things that they do well the lower down the list they go so I think the most important one for me when I'm watching anime and this extends to basically any kind of media that I watch whether it's movies or TV or whether it's even things like books and it's the story uh, the, the best anime the best media out there has good story and good story also means a lack of filler. Now, some people like filler. I personally hate filler. I hate feeling like my time is being wasted by the author uh, and I'm sort of just running around on this side mission that I don't want to be doing. It's like a fetch quest in an, in an RPG. I just don't want to be doing that. I want to be killing the main boss here. I don't care about this side character's side character uh, or, you know, their side quest within the side quest of the main quest. It's just bonkers. So I, I personally hate filler. So shows that have a lot of filler immediately lose a ton of points in my mind. And I've actually stopped watching certain shows because of filler. Uh, but I also think a good story in an anime has to have consistent progression. And that sort of relates to, um, that sort of relates to filler, but a good example would be Hunter x Hunter. Hunter x Hunter is in the middle of my A tier, and a lot of people put Hunter x Hunter as their top five. It's just outside of my top five right now, but the reason why it loses points is because it does not have consistent progression. It's really, really good for the first, like, 70 or 80 episodes the progression is very very good uh, even though the first 20 episodes are slow they are progressing the characters they're just not introducing nen they're not introducing the energy and they're not they're not doing a lot of world building and we'll get to world building uh, the problem with Hunter x Hunter uh, is that the progression is not consistent. So once you hit the Chimera arc, once you get to the middle of the Chimera arc, everything slows down. The progression just takes a complete nosedive and you start to see these sort of uh, circular missions and these circular episodes where you don't really do anything or you have a lot of repeats of the same characters fighting different enemies but basically doing the same things. How many different times are you going to show me Moral using his smoke to beat an enemy, to beat a different Chimera. It doesn't matter at all, especially when you get to the end of the arc and you realize that so many of those episodes were completely meaningless, meaning you could take them out and it wouldn't have affected the end game with, uh, you know, the, the, cha the, the chairman and with the Ant King and stuff like that. Uh, and then the last thing for story, in my opinion, is originality. I'm not going to take away too many points from shows that aren't very original, but it matters when a show has twists and stuff like that. So, you know, season one of JoJo, killing... Jonathan Joestar at the end uh, and having Dio take his his body and then that ends up being something that comes up up again in season three is a huge twist and that scores a lot of points for me 
um, as a watcher because I'm introduced to a new plot point and I'm, and I'm introduced to this idea that I never could have thought of where the main character gets axed off in the first season. That's one of the reasons why I love JoJo so much. They're not afraid to kill characters. Um, at least, you know, for the first couple arcs. The second thing that's really big for me is characters. So whether the character has relatability, whether the character's personality is consistent, you know, if, they, if they're if they angry for the first episode or first season and then suddenly they become a nice, jolly character, they become a pervert or whatever, that's weird. There has to be a sense of consistency and if there is growth and there should be character growth and that's one of my next points if there is character growth then uh that has to make sense and it has to be logical it can't just you know suddenly he goes from the the, the weak loser to the epic op experienced fighter you know in one episode that's just that's just totally disconnected for the for me and for the audience uh, and then the last thing for characters is script and voice acting scripting is difficult to gauge and i think I don't take a lot of points off for that, but you know, characters that constantly have awkward monologue and awkward dialogue and just say really cringy shit, that definitely takes away from anime in my opinion. And then voice acting. Uh, one of the reasons why I watch Yu Yu Hakusho and Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, etc. dubbed rather than subbed is because I think those two shows in particular, Yu Yu Hakusho and Dragon Ball, have insanely good English voice actors and actresses and I think they do a, a wonderful job of bringing that show to life um, and personally I cannot stand Goku's Japanese voice so that's a big one for me uh, moving on to number three the third most important thing for an anime to be top tier is world building world building is you know building a, a, around the characters and creating the the lore of the series so the important things for world building is that first of all it has to be simple to understand at the base level you should be able to explain the world of avatar the world of full metal alchemist the world of jojo you should be able to explain the basics of that quickly if it takes five minutes just to explain the basics that's overly complicated Complicated doesn't mean good. That's something that I think a lot of people confuse. But second to simple to understand, I think anime that has good world building has to be deep enough. The world building has to be simple to understand, but deep enough to take time to fully know. So it's it's easy to, at the baseline, just explain, you know, there's four elements. There's earth, wind, fire, and water, and people can bend them. And then there's one person that can bend them all, and they're called the avatar. That's it. That's all you need to know. But then it gets really deep when you go into the lore at a deeper level of the characters, of the histories, of the past avatars. You look at one, and then you start to introduce other things like the, the, the force of good and the force of evil and how they were like these banners and all this stuff. And you sort of, you know, you develop things more. That's what's important for world building. Uh, I think world building also needs to have some originality. So that is where certain shows lose points because they have good world building, but their whole their whole shtick is just mega generic. Uh, uh, yeah, we're catching these creatures and we're using them in battle. Well, that's Pokemon, Digimon, me, you know, meta, meta bots. Every every show has, you know, there's tons of shows that do that. It's just not original anymore in any way, shape, or form. And then the most subjective one for me for world building is that it has to just be cool. Um, as much as I enjoy Black Clover, the magic is pretty straightforward. He shoots fireballs, the guy has ice, the girl has this and that, or he, has, he teleports. It's just really basic laws of uh, or sort of um, ideas and rules of uh, fantasy and science fiction it's not really that cool compared to more interesting things like a psychic stand that can create bombs aka kira in season four of jojo so that that i think does matter as well but it's very very subjective number four for me is music and tone uh, and that one just is on its own music and tone the tone of the series whether it's consistently funny or consistently dark or it's a mixture i think that matters uh, not everybody like never not everybody likes to watch something that's super serious all the time other people don't like to watch anime that is too funny or too sarcastic like gintama but i think it's important for the tone to be consistent and to be present throughout the show even if there are deviations in certain episodes and then the music uh, i can't really explain why the music is good i don't have that much experience or knowledge of music composition but just listen to the soundtrack from Avatar, either Aang or Korra's um, series, and you'll see how insane the music is. And then you compare it to the music from like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Death Note. And you know what? Some of the tracks are good in some of those series, but there's no way they're going to compete with 
uh, the top tier stuff from like Full Metal Alchemist, from Avatar, even the intros and outros for shows like JoJo are just bonkers good with the music, and even Demon Hunter has amazing music. Uh, and then the last one here, number five, meaning and message. Now this one is a little bit harder to define as well, but I think once you finish the series or once you finish the season, it's that feeling you have at the end. You know, what kind of questions did the show raise? What kind of answers did the show give you? Um, and what kind of answers or what kind of questions did they try to answer? It's sort of like, is the show deep? And I know this is subjective and I know it's also, you know, like a five head thing where people try to seem that like they're smarter than you because they get the show. It's like a Rick and Morty type situation. I'm not really trying to say that, but I'm just trying to mean, you know, at the end of the day, Pokemon is not a deep show. Let's be honest. It's a kid who never ages and catches Pokemon and he, you know, it's like heartfelt feelings and it's just, it's really shallow. It's a very shallow show and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with the show, but you know, in the broader sense of it, you, media has some artistic value and to, you know, and try to answer some of these tougher questions, some of these questions of morality, some of these philosophical questions about life that other shows will tackle like Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, that obviously has to score at a lot more points than a show like Digimon where it's like, hey, we just evolved the dragon into a bigger dragon. Yo, that's sick. Check out my watch. It's, you know, you, you got to see that there's a bit of a difference there, um, even though you, some people might really love Digimon. Um, now, I can't really go into the list from, you know, top to bottom and touch on every single show, but I'll give you guys a couple here uh, that I think matter from my opinion. So, for example, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is really good. Some people might say it's overhyped right now, but I only have it in the middle of my A tier, despite the fact that I love the first season of Demon Slayer. I think from top to bottom, Demon Slayer hits all five of those. So, you know, at first glance, you'd say, well, well you know, Alex, why isn't that S tier? It's not S tier because it's only been one season. It's unfair to compare a show like Demon Slayer with one season that's nearly perfect to a show like Full Metal Alchemist with five amazing seasons or Avatar with three amazing seasons and so on and so forth. Um, it really just hasn't been long enough. Samurai Shampoo is the one exception for me because the author uh, only intended it to be one season and it's like self encapsulated. Um, but that was one of my first anime ever and I still think it stands the test of time as something that's amazing and that is why it's there on my S tier um, as a standalone season and I think if they wanted to do more seasons of it, they absolutely could. Uh, also, I want to talk about shows that I have sort of at the bottom. I have uh, Dragon Ball Z at the end of B tier, at sort of the bottom of B tier. I have Season 3, Stardust Crusaders for JoJo. I got One Piece uh, and Dragon Ball G uh, Super there in C tier. All of those shows, I think, suffer heavily from filler. And that's why I put story as my number one most important thing, because that is one of the biggest criticisms of anime in general and that's why a lot of casual fans just can't get into it because there's so much fucking filler and they just watch an episode and they're like what did i just watch oh wh what episode did you watch i watched episode 23 of naruto season one. Oh, that's a filler episode oh, okay so that episode had absolutely no impact on the story yeah basically but so like why did they make the episode well you get a little bit more information about how sasuke feels and you know blah 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 and it's just garbage and people just sitting there like so seriously you're saying there's a thousand episodes of one piece and i'm expected to watch them all huh they're just trying to milk you for money at this point at least in my opinion now not everybody feels as strongly as i do about filler but i feel really strongly about it and so that's why i dock those series so many points Another issue that I have with shows like Dragon Ball, specifically Dragon Ball Super, is that they rewrite the rules mid-season. And this is a thing um, related to consistency and related to uh, things that just, you know, they, they, they there's, there's a rule that they set somewhere in the show and they stick to the rule. At, you know, as a show progresses, if you bend the rules for certain reasons, that's okay. But to just establish a rule and then five episodes later completely break the rule because you don't know as the author, as the writer, how to, you know, create a different scenario and you're just lazy or you're a bad writer, it's like lost. You know, you get through five or six seasons of Lost, you invest all your time, and then at the end, they're just like, well, we're lazy, so we're not going to answer any of the questions that we put up. And we're also just going to be like, yeah, they were in purgatory the whole time. Here you go. Uh, so I really dislike shows that do that, and it feels like 
in my opinion, it's a huge waste of time for the audience uh, to invest in that. So that is why, although there are a lot of charming and amazing features of shows like Dragon Ball and One Piece, and they do a lot of really good things with, with world building, with characters, um, I think they fail big time on things like filler, and that's why I put them so low. Um, that's also, for the most part, why I put a bunch of shows uh, lower down on the list, like uh, Seven Deadly Sins. And the interesting thing for Death Note is I feel like, for me just personally, I lost a lot of connection to the show when they killed L. So that just sort of lost a lot of points for me. And it, it sort of, it, it was world building, but I feel like the world building just frayed and became really sort of shattered, uh, like, a, like a mirror being broken. And at that point, I just really couldn't focus on the show anymore because there were so many characters moving around and it just didn't really feel like the same show anymore where it was, you know, Kira versus L. It felt like this whole different thing. Um, and it sort of felt like they were dragging it on for, uh, you know, possibly monetary uh, financial reasons. And then D tier, you know, it's mostly just kids' shows Naruto, Digimon, Pokemon. There's really not much to say about them. They're just not that good because they're aimed for kids, so they're aimed at a younger audience. I've just grown out of it at this point. If I made this list like 10 years ago or Maybe not 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, I definitely would have put them a lot higher. So I'm really curious what you guys like uh, in terms of anime and what you would put at the top of your list and what you would put at the bottom. You, If you want, you can also take my list and you can reorganize it based on your tastes and your opinions. And you can send that to me on Discord. You can send it to me on Twitter. Uh, hit me up and we can talk about it. And also, most of all, if you have suggestions for me for anime or if you want to take some of my uh, favorites and watch them as, as a suggestion for you, let me know how that goes. Uh, I love talking about anime and I love having like a critical discussion about this kind of stuff um, because for some people it's just entertainment. For me it's entertainment but I also want to come out of it knowing something more or knowing something new. So hit me up down below in the comments. Share this video if you enjoyed it as well. That would really help me out and I super appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.